If there were to be a show like The Rich Kids of North Korea, I think Kim Jong-un would be perfect as the lead cast. It was reported by a joint South Korean and American investigation in 2013 that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, also known as Supreme Leader, has a net worth of $5 billion. I mean, what kind of person splurges money on over 30 pianos and hires the Harlem Globetrotters for entertainment? Well, Kim Jong-un. That's who. As of 2013, Kim Jong-un's assets were found in over 200 foreign bank accounts, located throughout the world in several countries, including Russia, Austria, Liechtenstein, China, Singapore, Switzerland, and Luxembourg. Let's take a look at some of the things Kim Jong-un spends his money on. A piano collection. In 2014, the Supreme Leader allegedly imported a thumping 36 top-end pianos into the country, alongside a lot of high-priced recording equipment. A grand piano can sell for more than $170,000. Let's calculate how much it would cost to import 36 top-end pianos. That is a whopping sum of $6,120,000. Now, if you ask me, I think that is lavish. Did you know that Kim Jong-un has his own private 13 piece live band, made up exclusively of female violinists? An old friend of Kim Jong-un, the ex-basketball player Dennis Rodman, revealed that the Supreme Leader is very fond of music and loves everything musical. From singing karaoke to listening to 80s jams and attending K-pop performances, in his words, they love American 80s music. They do karaoke to it. He has this 13-piece girls band with violins. He gets a mic and they play the whole time. He loves The Doors and Jimi Hendrix. Tricks. Oldies. When I first went, the live band only played two songs for four hours, the theme songs from Rocky and Dallas. His love for music is true, because in 2018, Kim Jong-un admitted that he likes K-pop music, saying he was deeply moved. After watching a two-hour concert with South Korean performers in Pyongyang, the concert Kim enjoyed featured popular girl band Red Velvet and singer Cho Yong-pil. Kim and his wife, Ri Sol-ju, clapped along with the music, and Kim later posed for pictures with the artists backstage. Multiple palaces. Speaking of pennies, what if I told you that Kim Jong-un owns not one, not ten, but seventeen palaces dotted around North Korea? It is not surprising to hear that world leaders have multiple residences. For example, America's former president, Donald Trump, had about three part-time residences, excluding the White House. Now, that seems a little over the top. But that is meager compared to what Kim Jong-un owns. Kim has an array of impressive properties at his disposal. According to reports from The Sun, there are 17 phenomenal palaces used exclusively by the Supreme Leader and his family, and these palaces are grand, opulent, and luxurious. There is one known as the Ryongsong Residence. It is also known as the Central Luxury Mansion. It was first built in 1983. This is the Supreme Leader's colossal main residence. He stays here with his first lady, Ri Sol-ju. The complex has an underground wartime headquarters, protected with walls with iron rods and concrete covered with lead in case of a nuclear war. The entire complex is spread over more than four and a half square miles of Pyongyang suburbs. For visual comparison, that is about the same size as London's Heathrow Airport. This property is like a whole city on its own. It has a private train station, a horse racing track, various recreational facilities, and even three man-made lakes. Dennis Rodman compares Kim's residence to Ibiza. He told The Sun about a hedonistic week long bender on the island in 2013. Kim's island is amazing, Rodman said. It's like going to Hawaii or Ibiza, but he's the only one that lives there. He's got 50 to 60 people around him all the time, just normal people drinking cocktails and laughing the whole time. If you drink a bottle of tequila, it's the best tequila. Everything you want, he has the best. Some of the facilities at the Ryongsong residence include banquet halls at the lakefront, a swimming pool that is 15 meters wide and 50 meters long, with a giant water slide, a running track and athletic field, a spa and sauna, horse stables and riding area, shooting range, and a horse racing track. Less than 20 miles away, Kim has another gigantic mansion, known as the Kangdong Residence. This Kangdong Residence is the second major residence of the North Korean leader. It is used as a summer residence
residents to spend holidays or for parties with close officials. Just like the Ryongsong residents, the Kangdong also has three massive man-made lakes and a private train station. There are so many guest houses there, too, and an alluring garden. In this residence, there are also furnished entertainment facilities with bowling, shooting and roller skating, horse stables and a racing track, and a football field. The Supreme Leader has another compound on the seaside, at the country's east coast. This is called the Wonsan Residence. People say it is more flamboyant and extravagant than the Ryongsong Residence and the Kangdong Residence. It's speculated to be about 10 acres in size. The Wonsan Residence is home to an assortment of private villas, beaches, and a large boat shed that was built at some point in the late 2000s, according to publicly available satellite photos. This residence is connected to a massive sports stadium and a water park. The grounds of this residence has 10 separate villas, a private harbor, a basketball court, and a theater. He owns 14 more impressive residences like this. Private Cinema Indeed, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Kim Jong-il, the former North Korean supreme leader, had a strong obsession for movies and cinema, so much so that he owned more than 30,000 VHSs and DVDs of Hollywood blockbusters like Titanic, Gladiator, and Godzilla, to mention a few. The price of these VHSs and DVDs is estimated to be around $600,000. He was particularly obsessed with all things James Bond, screening every installment installment of the franchise, and worshipping Sean Connery. He even counted Elizabeth Taylor among his favorite actresses. Kim Jong-un shares his father's passion, and as a result of his love for movies, he built a staggering 1,000-seat private theater for him and his close comrade's enjoyment, hiring the Harlem Globetrotters. Sometimes, owning things does not do justice to how much wealth you acquire, but paying for an experience could give away how wealthy you are. In Kim Jong-un's case, he hired hired the Harlem Globetrotters. The Harlem Globetrotters are an American exhibition basketball team. They combine athleticism, theater, and comedy in their style of play. In 2013, the 39-year-old dictator invited the world-famous basketballers to play an exhibition game against North Korea's national team. To get the Globetrotters to play in the U.S., you should be budgeting around $75,000, and this standard fee excludes accommodation and flights. Kim loves basketball so much. So much so that in 2019, he asked that the U.S. send famous basketball players to North Korea as part of a proposed denuclearization deal. In his words, it was to normalize relations between the two countries, but we all know it's because of his unwavering love for the sport, seeing that most of his mansions have a court or two in them. Kim Jong-il was also a lover of basketball. As a matter of fact, Dennis Rodman revealed to TMZ Sports that in 2000, Kim Jong-il requested that America send Mike Michael Jordan to North Korea. The former Supreme Leader really wanted Michael Jordan, but got shut down by his heirness. The then Secretary of State Madeleine Albright gifted a ball signed by the six-time NBA champion to the North Koreans instead. In his words, basically, he asked Michael Jordan first, and Michael Jordan said no. So then he asked about me, and I said yes. That's how it all started. Private jets, armored planes, trains, and automobiles. At this point, the only person Kim Jong-un is trying trying to outdo is himself, because anybody trying to be in a competition with him should know that that's a dead end to go. Did you know that the President of America's private plane is called Air Force One? Well, Kim Jong-un has a private jet that he calls Air Force Un. Obviously, Kim Jong-un has a good sense of humor. His Air Force Un is the Ilyushin IL-62. The Ilyushin IL-62 is one of the proudest achievements in Russian aviation history. The plane has crystal ashtrays and leather couches, and is said to cost around $1.5 million. Instead of 200 passengers, it carries just the autocrat and his trusted aides. The maintenance and the hangars of these planes cost a fortune. Interestingly, the Kim family does not fly. They use the rails. Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, was aerophobic, so instead of flying, he resorted to using trains. He owned 90 luxury train cars. These include a dining car, colossal 
colossal conference car, several saloons, and fully equipped kitchen that catered for different cuisines. Kim inherited these things from his father and even redesigned some of the interior. One of the train cars has plush, pink leather seats, and his dad's old conference carriage now has modern white paneling. Sadly, Kim Jong-il died in a train, and the armored train is at the $900 million Kumsusan Mausoleum, where his body was embalmed, alongside his sunglasses, the pointy platform shoes he famously wore in the last decades of his life, and a MacBook Pro laying open on his desk. There are 20 private train stations dotted across the country that only Kim Jong-un's train is permitted to use. He has used his train to visit Russia, China, and Vietnam, as well as his network of palaces and command centers, some of which are located underground. While going on these trips, strict security measures are taken to ensure the safety of the family. Two guard trains are crammed with bodyguards, one in front and one behind, to ensure that the route is clear and safe. Helicopters provide overhead cover as the train winds its way between a network of some 20 private stations used exclusively by Kim. The train can also carry Kim's armored Mercedes, sometimes accompanied by another armored vehicle carrying his personal mobile bathroom. We cannot talk of luxury without mentioning the Supreme Leader's fleet of cars. Kim Jong-un loves luxurious cars. His collection of supercars is said to be worth about $20 million. He is reportedly said to have over 100 cars in his garages, inclusive of a $100 $162,000 Audi R8, a $100,000 Range Rover, and an armored Rolls-Royce Phantom that costs more than $500,000. Of course, Kim Jong-un has a favorite, and that is the Mercedes Maybach limousine. When he wants to arrive in style, he pulls up in his Mercedes-Benz limousine. They are bulletproof and cost about $1.6 million. Kim Jong-un also owns other sports cars and race cars. He owns a fleet of more than 100 luxury cars. He drove the $500,000 Rolls-Royce Phantom to his meeting with Mike Pompeo, the former director of the CIA. Boats and Yachts If you think you have seen a very lavish life, wait till you see the beauty that is Kim Jong-un's princess yacht. In 2013, Kim Jong-un used a 95-foot luxury yacht worth $7 million to navigate North Korea's east coast during a 10-day on-the-spot guidance tour, which was a visit to a fishery station. Kim and his top generals were found getting offshore from a huge 95-foot yacht. This yacht was a luxury 95MY princess yacht. It is owned by the Louis Vuitton Moat Hennessy Group, commonly known as LVMH, a French multinational holding and conglomerate that specializes in luxury goods, the same group that controls companies such as Louis Vuitton and Christian Dior. It is a British motor vessel, which has three wide decks, a kitchen, a sizable salon, a gourmet area, a dining area for up to 10 people, a stateroom, a full kitchen, and four bedrooms. It can comfortably take up to eight people in its cabin, and each bedroom is en suite with its own private bathroom. The NBA legend Dennis Rodman also gave the Sun a rare description of what the inside of Kim's luxury yacht looks like. He described the 95-foot vessel as a cross between a ferry and a Disney boat. Satellite images of the Hermit Kingdom reveal that outside of his Wonsan compound, there's another yacht in the docks, which is about 100 feet long. NK News in an article had suggested that Kim Jong-un owns fleets of jet skis, a water slide boat, and a 60-meter-long leisure boat, an enormous pool party barge, a private 200-foot-long multi story pool party barge is another luxurious vanity Kim Jong-un has. This barge is the length of an Olympic swimming pool, which has spiraling water slides at its top end and a massive two-story backstage lounge. One of Kim Jong-il's known gourmands, called Furlanis, told a story of him expressing the pool party barge, and it was wild. He said, Mr. Ulm, Furlanis' regime-assigned minder, told me to get ready because the next day we would be cooking at the seaside on a boat. When I expressed my doubts about this, he cut me short with his usual smile and urged me not to worry. The next morning, a cabin cruiser topped with a salon and kitchen was sent to pick us up like a private water taxi. The writing on her stern read, Capri, Miami, Florida. Ah, the mysteries of international politics. We sped along for about half an hour to the languid notes of Korean music, past the islands and islets that form an archipelago in front of the base. At last, a kind of a semi-mobile floating amusement park appeared before us, which was able to 
anchor in different places every day. It was made up of two water slides, which dropped down into a swimming pool. On the other side of the pool, there was a two-story building with an observation deck on the roof. I doubt if even Italian director and screenwriter Federico Fellini could have concocted something of this magnitude. We did not draw near this floating funfair, and our guides even tried to prevent us from gawking at it. They went so far as to physically, though partly in jest, turn our heads aside with their hands. About half a mile further on, we came to a big ship which lay anchored in sea. The heart of this ocean liner was, needless to say, a fully equipped kitchen fitted with huge windows overlooking the sea and where it would be our pleasure to work. The amusement park has been renovated in 2002, 2009, and in 2019. Food and Alcohol Kim Jong-un has a great taste for the finer things of life, and this includes his appetite. After the Hanoi summit Kim attended in 2019, Kim flew in his own chefs and servers and prepared the tastiest lobsters, caviar, wagyu beef, and foie gras. If money can buy it, Kim Jong-un is definitely having it. Chef Paul Smart, who cooked for the ruler and U.S. President Donald Trump during their summit in Vietnam, expressed that the Supreme Leader has a rich taste. He said that the North Korean team had told him prior all about Kim's favorite foods, and they brought their own ingredients, some of them high-end. Kim is known to have extremely indulgent culinary tastes. In 2016, he reportedly ordered almost $67,000 worth of expensive cheeses from Italy alone. Kim schooled in Switzerland, where he developed a taste for Johnny Walker scotch and French cheeses, but splurging $67,000 on cheese alone is confusing. What's more, The Sun revealed that he he also spent 59,000 pounds on chewing gum. Kim is also big on beverages. In 2016, he reportedly imported almost $1 million worth of Brazilian coffee. In 2015, he imported 155,000 pounds of whiskey from Germany, Denmark, and Georgia, and 2,000 pounds of rum from Germany and Denmark. Then, 6,764 pounds worth of gin from Germany, and 108,000 pounds went on vodka from Russia and former Soviet states Georgia and Belarus. He further imported 22,000 pounds of liquors, with 9,000 pounds worth of the drinks from France. 219,000 pounds went on wine and champagne from countries like Italy, Bulgaria, and Macedonia. He also spent 134,000 pounds on scallops from China. I can't even begin to imagine what the room or palace where all these are stored looks like. Reports have it that Kim Jong-un once drank 10 bottles of France's famous Bordeaux in a single evening. Bordeaux standardly costs about $1,000 per bottle, so 10 bottles will sum up to $10,000. High-priced horses Everyone knows that Russian President Vladimir Putin is a sucker for horses, seeing that he always takes pictures of himself on a pony. Kim is also a fan. He spent a whopping $75,000 on 12 purebred horses from Russia. There was a trendy picture of Kim Jong-un ascending the snowy peaks of Mount Pig to, atop a majestic white stallion. This picture caused a lot of controversy. In early 2020, North Korean authorities purchased two more of these white stallions for $23,400, according to a Moscow Times report, meaning that each horse cost the regime almost $12,000, a huge expense for a country facing food shortages. Between 2010 and 2023, it was reported that Kim imported at least 138 horses from Russia for the sum of $584,000. It is estimated that around 20% of the entire state budget is spent on facilities to house and train the horses. Watches When it comes to dressing up, less is more for Kim. You would always catch him ever so often putting on a black button-up suit, but his wristwatches are from expensive brands. He's been seen wearing an IWC Portofino automatic wristwatch, which costs about $14,000, during a missile test. At another missile test launch, he wore a Movado Museum timepiece. In 2010, it was disclosed that he spent about $64,000, and in two years, that number tripled to around $230,000. In 2016, he imported around 100 brand new Rolexes as gifts for his elite party members in December 2016. His wristwatch collection's cost is about $8.2 million. Kumsusan Palace of the Sun The palace was built in 19 as the Kumsusan Assembly Hall, and served
served as Kim Il-sung's official residence. Following the elder Kim's death in 1994, Kim Jong-il had the building renovated and transformed into his father's mausoleum. It is believed that the conversion cost was as high as a whopping sum of $900 million. They are definitely allergic to doing small things in the Kim family. Kum Su San is the largest mausoleum dedicated to a communist leader and the only one to house the remains of the late dictators in the Kim dynasty. It is fronted by a large square, approximately 500 meters in length. The inside of the palace is characterized by vast halls, high ceilings, grand staircases, and opulent decoration throughout the myriad of rooms. Beyond the mausoleum chambers, there are rooms showcasing honorary titles, medals, and achievements that each leader received during their lifetimes. There is also a ceremonial hall that includes statues of each leader, a hall of lamentation, and rooms highlighting the trips taken locally and abroad by each leader. The palace also showcases important possessions, including the train carriage where General Kim Jong-il passed away, the golf cart he used on field guidance trips, and even his boat can be found exhibited inside the palace, preserved in its original state. There are photographs of tourists admiring the Kumsusan Palace of the Sun. It has now become a place for sightseeing. This is pretty innovative, but is it worth the money spent there? The grounds of the palace form a park, green and manicured with water fountains, bright flower beds, and a moat where swans can be seen. The complex is enclosed by a granite fence. It's common to see Koreans taking professional group photos here after their visit inside. Private Golf Courses Kim Jong-un comes from a long line of golfers. His father, Kim Jong-il, once said he sunk 11 holes in one in one day on a course that he owned. And Kim Jong-un carried on his father's legacy by maintaining top-quality private golf courses. Apparently, he has more than one private golf course, and these do not come cheap. They cost around $3 million to develop and around $500,000 a year year to maintain. Each of these golf courses is said to be taken care of by the government's appointed officials. Ri Sol Ju Ri Sol Ju is the wife of the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, and the First Lady. Of course, she has to represent. Although extremely private, she has also been spotted wearing a Dior clutch bag. Her expensive taste is not shocking, seeing how she pulls up for events and official assignments looking very elegant in designer items. From her clothes to bags to shoes and to accessories, Ri Sol Ju does not fail to look the part of a billionaire's wife. Once, Kim Jong-un and wife were photographed with an expensive $1,600 Christian Dior bag. Daily delivery of McDonald's to the capital. Some sources suggest that they transport McDonald's burgers daily to the capital. Massive parades and festivals are also hosted year-round. Millions of dollars have been wasted to please Kim and the elites. In 2017, The Sun reported that Kim Jong-un's North Korean embassy staff were seen smuggling in McDonald's takeaways, as it had been banned in North Korea. One builder, working on a property close to Kim's London HQ, said, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A guy came back in a car and got out clutching McDonald's drinks. The food was disguised in a supermarket bag. I think it was a Sainsbury's one, but the drinks were clearly from Mackey's. I've also seen pizzas being delivered. Secret Harem Another one of Kim's lavish splurges is his secret harem. I guess it's not really a secret anymore. Secret harems, or kipumjo as they are known in North Korea, are a collection of groups of approximately 2,000 women and girls reportedly maintained by the leader of North Korea for the purposes of providing entertainment including that of a sexual nature. For high-ranking members of the Workers' Party of Korea, officials and their families, as well as, occasionally, distinguished guests. They are responsible for bringing pleasure to Kim Jong-un and his comrades. The squad seems to be important to Kim Jong-un because he has splurged up to $3.8 million for their lingerie alone in 2016. His harem must always look their best who are the members of the Pleasure Squad. These women are a source of entertainment to the Supreme Leader and his officials. According to The Sun, some of these women are sorted into different units. Some of them sing and dance, some are given the job of giving massages, while some of them are explicitly meant for sexual activities. They undergo serious medical testing to ensure that they are still, quote, 
intact. It is safe to say that some of Kim Jong-un's fetishes are fancy lingerie, racy corsets and suspenders that must be imported from China. Statues for his honor. Of course, Kim Jong-un thinks that he deserves a statue, just like the former presidents of the United States of America who did something great for their country. So he decided to blow millions of dollars to build his very own statue made of bronze, to honor himself and maybe stroke his own ego. In fact, he also built statues made of bronze for his father, Kim Jong-il, and his grandfather, Kim Il-sung. In total, the statues cost an estimated $46 million. Before building these huge statues of himself, his father and his grandfather, who are also known as the Three Kims, Kim Jong-un had already started building statues of his ancestors and political bigwigs over the past five years. He had ordered his own personal army of workers to construct 45 monuments and statues, amounting to $160 million. If you have to take a tour around North Korea, you might be seeing a lot of statues around, all thanks to Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un can easily be used as a model for extravagant spending and opulence, from owning the best fleet of automobiles, yachts, and boats, to owning several majestic palaces and even splendid food and alcohol, it's hard to not admire or envy the supreme leader. His profuse and lavish display of wealth has caught the attention of so many governmental bodies and organizations around the world. Kim's taste for the finer things in life was legendary way before he became supreme leader of North Korea in 2011. It is a family thing. His father, Kim Jong-il, was also a lavish spender. But in comparison to Kim Jong-un, I would say he was pretty Prudent. Kim Jong-il crawled so Kim Jong-un could fly. Now that it looks like Kim Jue would be Kim Jong-un's successor, how lavish do you think she would be? Thank you for watching, and tell me in the comment section which of Kim's spending did you think was the most extravagant?